Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to start learning how to handle questions that are on a slope. What makes slope so different, Kevin? Okay, good question. So, if we have a normal object that is on a horizontal surface like this, then the typical forces are the applied force, normal force, friction and gravity. The direction of motion is always in the horizontal, and so the only two forces that we need to use are FA and FF. In the previous lesson, we saw that if FA is at an angle, then we simply break it down into its horizontal component because that would give us the angle. But when you're looking at a slope, you must remember that your direction of motion is no longer horizontal or vertical. It's now diagonal, so it's in this direction over here. So we have a slight problem. Why? Because have a look at the following. Oh, but before I say that, notice that if, if our direction of motion here is horizontal, then the vertical forces, they don't bother us at all because they are in the complete opposite direction. And so what forces are acting on this object? Well, if we did a free body diagram, we know that there's gravity, which always acts down. Then there's an applied force. Then there's friction. And then there's a normal force. Remember that that always goes at 90 degrees to the surface. And so let's see if we can identify any forces that are in the wrong place. So we know that we're moving in this direction. If we look at 90 degrees to that, then that would be like this. So FA is okay. FF is okay. FN is also okay because it's on the 90 degree axis. Whereas FG is completely out of place. It's in the middle of nowhere. Notice here that Fn and Fg were on the vertical direction and Fa and Ff were on the horizontal. So everything was fine. But when we looked in the previous lesson, we saw that we were in a vertical and we had a horizontal where Fg was down, Fn is up, force of friction is to the left. But then your applied force, have a look at this one, out of place, right? So what did we have to do with that? Well, we had to break it up into the x and the y or the vertical and the horizontal components. And so we are going to have to do the same with gravity. Why? Because it doesn't fit on any of the axes. We've got the red axis and we've got the green axis and then we've got this random FG in the middle of nowhere. Okay, Kevin, I get it. You're going on a bit too much now. So how, do, how are we going to fix this? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this force of gravity and we're going to break it up into two components, a downwards component, or, or like in that direction, and then we're going to break it up going down like this, and then we can ignore that. So now we've got two components of gravity. We've got the one going along the green axis and the other one going along the red axis. The one along the green axis, we're going to call that gravity perpendicular. Where does perpendicular come from? It's because it's perpendicular to the slope. And then we're going to call this one FG parallel. Why? Because it's parallel to the slope. Okay, Kevin, so I know that to calculate FG, I normally take mass times by gravity. Yes, that is correct. Well done. So to f what you're going to have to remember, and you just got to memorize this, to find the perpendicular gravity, if you need that, you have to say mass times gravity, and then you multiply that by the cos of the angle of the slope. Okay? Then to find parallel, you do the same thing, but you're going to use the sin. There's a whole mathematical reason why we use cos and sin like that, but you must remember that parallel is sin. Perpendicular is cos. And guys, you should watch that last section that I just explained over and over and over until you get it. Please don't make life difficult for yourself. I've seen where the students struggle. I've been a tutor for quite a while now. I know where students struggle. So... That might have been confusing at first, but just go over it a few times. In summary though, if your axes are horizontal and vertical, then if there are any forces that do not fit on that, then they have to be broken up into the components. So when you do a slope question, your axes go up the slope and into the slope like that. They always make 90 degrees with each other. And so friction was good. It was going down the slope. The applied force was also okay. The normal force was okay. But gravity acts downwards. And so look at that. Gravity does not fit onto the slopes. And so we break it up instead into two components called perpendicular and parallel. 
now at least gravity fits onto the axes and to calculate perpendicular and parallel we use those two formulas over there so let's say we wanted to calculate the acceleration well on a slope and it's always a good idea to do this even if you're not on a slope we should draw a free body diagram so we know that we've got an applied force going up the slope friction which I've given you here is the 20 Newton that's going down the slope then we've got the normal force now gravity acts down so on your free body diagram you can do it like that but what you should now don't add this to your free body diagram because teachers will mark it incorrect if you do this and then you put the components but so I'm going to do it in a different color when doing your calculation you must remember that gravity comes in two different components when you are on a slope but you don't draw this on your free body diagram. Some teachers might tell you you can, then go with it. If your teacher's happy with that, then do it. But most teachers, and I think curriculums are now changing, they want you to just put FG going down. But when you're doing your calculations, you must remember FG parallel and FG perpendicular. Okay, now look how easy this is. In which direction is this object moving? Is it going upwards and downwards like this? Or is it going up and down the slope? Well, obviously it's going up and down the slope. And so you look on your free body diagram and those forces that are in that direction, those are the forces that you are going to use in F net equals MA. Now, when you write down F net equals MA, choose a direction. So let's say up the slope is positive like that. And so now you literally just look at your forces. Okay, so we've got FA minus FG parallel minus the force of friction. And so that's going to equal to MA. Now your applied force is 100. FG parallel. Kevin, what is that? Guys, I remember I just told you that FG parallel is equal to mass, which is 10 times by 9.8 times by the sin of the angle, which is sin 20, minus the friction. And that's equal to the mass, which is 10 times by the acceleration which we don't know. So the whole left hand side can be typed in on the calculator now. And so the acceleration will be 4.65 meters per second to the minus two, and then just say up the slope. And so there we have it guys, that is your introduction to slopes. The main thing is, or the only main thing, or the only thing you need to know is that gravity can no longer, you can't just treat gravity as acting down. You now need to break it up into perpendicular and parallel using this over here. That's all that you need to remember. Everything else is the same. We're still using F net equals MA. It's just that part. So thank you for watching.